Good evening and welcome to the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation Wildlife Artist of the Year 2020 Award Ceremony. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Georgina Lamb, CEO of the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation, which was established over 35 years ago by my late grandfather, David Shepherd. This is the first time that we have ever hosted our awards and event online, and we couldn't be more grateful for the support and encouragement from all of you in making this happen. We're currently living through unprecedented times, but it's important to remember how we all ended up here. It was a result of the illegal wildlife trade, a multi-billion dollar industry which is driving species to extinction. The global pandemic, which we're all living through at the moment, came about as a result of the exploitation and consumptive use of wildlife and natural resources. Never have the world eyes been so focused on the health of the environment and tonight so beautifully showcases why it is imperative to protect her and all living creatures at all costs. Time is not a luxury that we have when it comes to species survival. We must act now and we must act bravely and be more committed to positive change than ever before. Wildlife markets need to be shut down, the consumptive use of wildlife products abandoned and we must push for an end to the illegal wildlife trade. The David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation is proud to be at the forefront of species survival in our fight to end wildlife crime. And through art, the emotive response and funding it can raise, together we really can make a difference. I am delighted to be co-hosting tonight with one of my favourite people in the entire world, Laura Wright. Not only is Laura a fantastic friend to the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation, but is also an official ambassador alongside her equally wonderful husband, Harry Rowland. When Laura isn't cycling across Zambia or running a marathon to raise funds for DSWF, she can be found more regularly singing and is a world-renowned classical artist. She's also currently number one in the classical charts, so a huge congratulations and we are thrilled to have you with us this evening to take us through tonight's award. Seeing as tonight is a little different to all being in person at the Mal Galleries in London, as we normally are, sharing a glass of wine, looking at the beautiful artwork on the walls, we would still love to engage with as many of you as possible. So please do use the Q&A function, which you'll see on your screens, and let us know where you're watching live from tonight and share and comment as much and as often as you like. It's really wonderful for us to know who's in the room with us and to all feel a little bit closer. During tonight's award ceremony, we'll be sharing with you the fantastic category winners of this year's Wildlife Artist of the Year 2020 exhibition. And of course, handing over the baton from Mr. Stephen Rue, last year's 2019 winner and his fantastic giant bronze wall climbing octopus. We do, however, want to shine a light on every single artist who entered this year. The competition was fierce and having sat on the judging panel, it was hugely challenging. The range and breadth of medium, style and subject has made it one of our most exciting competitions to date and I hope you'll all agree that the finalists are incredible. Please do take a look at the full collection at davidshepherd.org. We're also delighted to be supported by a fantastic array of guest artists and have online some very rare and never, be see, never before seen David Shepherd originals and a fantastic collection of sketches from the field by Mandy Shepherd following a recent trip to visit project sites supported by David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation in Uganda. All of these again can be found on our website and I would just like to mention that Mandy has incredibly generously donated 100% of all sales to support our conservation work. We have some incredible sales and have sold just under 40 pieces from the main collection since Thursday alone, but there are still lots of pieces available for sale and a few red dots missing. So please go and take a look. And if you do purchase artwork through Wildlife Art of the Year, you can go to sleep tonight knowing that it really will make a difference to some of the world's most threatened and vulnerable species. The David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation's DNA and heartbeat is art. It's how we started and it's our life force in so many ways. To share a little bit more about the competition, we're delighted to now show you a short film showcasing some of this year's incredible pieces. David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation launched Wildlife Artist of the Year in 2007, 13 years ago, to celebrate the power and impact wildlife art can have on the natural world. 
established to raise vital funds to save wildlife. It was David's dream to give back to the animals to whom he felt he owed a debt due to his success as an artist and to help save many of the species who graced his canvas. Despite the unusual circumstance around this year's competition as a result of the global pandemic and having to move wildlife artists online, it has never been more important to come together and harness the power of art to protect endangered wildlife. Wildlife Artist of the Year has become an internationally recognised competition and fixture on the global art calendar. The competition attracts exceptional submissions from some of the leading and upcoming wildlife artists worldwide. This year, in 2020, we have seen over 1,200 entries from 53 countries, highlighting the reach, breadth and impact of the show. Art is a part of the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation's DNA. It's our heritage. It was the passion David felt for the natural world, her wildlife and the wild spaces, which drove his determination to turn words and paintings into action to help turn the tide on species extinction. Since our inception in 1984, DSWF has given over 10 million pounds in direct grants to ground-based conservation initiatives, protecting some of the world's most threatened and vulnerable species and to fight wildlife crime. A huge amount of this has been generated through the sales of wildlife art and with the help of our fantastic family of artists, supporters and generous buyers. Wildlife art can help transport us to the wild spaces who play host to some of the planet's most iconic or even lesser known animals and landscapes. It helps us reconnect with nature and the natural world in a time where humans have grown increasingly disconnected, a time when it is more important than ever to prioritise the health of our planet and wildlife. As we witness the escalation in global biodiversity loss and species extinction, wildlife art can play a part in both inspiring and providing vital financial assistance to the brave men and women fighting on the front line against wildlife crime. Thanks to the generosity of artists and sponsors, every sale of artwork from Wildlife Artist of the Year gives back to conservation and helps us turn the tide on extinction. Wildlife Artist of the Year 2020 wouldn't be possible without all of the incredible entrants, supporters and generous sponsors. Good evening, everyone. My name's Laura Wright, and I am so pleased to be co-hosting this year's Wildlife Artist of the Year Awards 2020, alongside the wonderful Georgina Lamb, of course, the new CEO of the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation. We are thrilled to be joined this year by an expert judging panel of Emily Lamb, Mandy Shepherd, Melanie Shepherd, Nina Neve, Wendy Fees, Hazel Sohn, Simon Trapnell, Jamie Roundtree and Gary Hodges. And we're going to be hearing comments about the winners from some of our judges later on, which I'll be sharing with you. Now, my profession, as already mentioned, outside of working with the charity as a community ambassador is music. 
I'm a professional singer and we thought it would be wonderful to have some live music for you all tonight to start proceedings. We've chosen something that we feel lyrically relates to wildlife and art, so I really, really hope you enjoy. You think I'm an ignorant savage and you've been so many places, I guess it must be so. But still I cannot see if the savage one is me. How can there be so much that you don't know? You don't know. Think you own whatever land you land on. The earth is just a dead thing you can claim. But I know every rock and tree and creature has a life, has a spirit, has a name. You think the only people who are people are the people who look and think like you. But if you walk the steps of a stranger you'll learn things you never knew you never knew have you ever heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon or ask the grinning bobcat why he grins can you sing with all the voices of the mountains can you paint with all the colors of the wind can you paint with all the colors of the wind? Come run the hidden pine trails of the forest. Come taste the sun sweet berries of the earth. Come roll in all the riches all around you. And for once, never knowing what they're worth. The rainstorm and the river are my brothers. The heron and the otter are my friends. And we are all connected to each other in a circle, in a hoop that never ends. How high can the sycamore grow if you cut it down? Then you'll never know And you'll never hear the wolf cry to the blue corn moon For whether we are white or copper skinned We need to sing with all the voices of the mountains We need to paint with all the colours of the wind You can own the earth and still all you'll own is earth until you can paint with all the colors of the Thank you, Laura. I have goosebumps, so I'm sure everyone else does. And um, before we jump straight off and kick off tonight's award with the first category, just want to shout out to everyone who is sharing where they're calling in from. We've got Wales, Santiago, London, Oregon, US. And I have to say, I have a special mention to Lynn, who is calling in from Australia, where it is 4.30 in the morning. So thank you so much to everyone who is joining us this evening. So to kick off, we are starting with Human Impact, the first of our categories which we'll be sharing with you this evening, which is generously sponsored by Indus Experience. The judging panel for Human Impact is different from the other categories and is comprised of the incredible Stephen Rue, 2019 Way winner. Stephen is one of DSWF's most committed art supporters and conservation never strays far from his mind. He's joined by the innovative, passionate and thought-provoking Martin Aveling and I just want to shine a light on one of the pieces actually that Martin has entered this year into the main competition, which is of a beautiful koala painting, or was a beautiful koala painting, which Martin then 
selflessly burnt, catching the ash in the jar for sale. The environmental message at a time when Australia was ravaged by bushfires highlights the fragility of the natural world and it reminds all of us as to why we should do more. Martin and Stephen are joined by Emily Lamb, who is of course my sister and one of the most powerful and inspirational wildlife artists and advocates of her time. And finally, last but not least, we are delighted to have been joined by Amanda Couch, who is the Senior Lecturer in Fine Art at the University of Creative Arts. The youth of today are set to inherit a heavy and complex burden of protecting our ailing planet. Humans have an indelible effect on the earth and change needs to be reversed in terms of our environmental impact and it's moving at a glacial pace. One of the reasons that we set up human impact category, which was the brainchild of Martin many, many years ago, is to celebrate entries from artists aged between 16 and 22 to provide a platform for young people to make a statement through their art about how humans are impacting on the environment. Delighted to hand over to Laura now to share with you the winner of human impact. Thanks, Georgina. We are so thrilled to announce the winner of the human impact category is There's No Smoke Without Fire by Scarlett Henderson. And we'd like to share with you some comments from Judge Stephen Rue. This piece was a clear winner for me. I instantly loved the subject matter and the unusual composition was exquisite. Although clearly the focus of the piece, the artist's decision to position the birds off to one side created a clear narrative in a beautifully simplified form. When I looked closer and realised the entire piece was created by pointillism, I was blown away. The artist has demonstrated many aspects of a worthy winner, including the exceptional tonal control and variation to create the visually impressive cloud formation. A fantastic piece, which I'd happily have on my wall. We're also delighted to be joined. I have to give a special shout out to Peter Blinson, who is the project director of Painted Dog Conservation, who is dialing in from the deepest, darkest Huangi National Park in Zimbabwe. So it is so fantastic to have some of our projects with us this evening, including Game Rangers International, who are also online. It really is wonderful to see everybody sending your comments. So please do continue. Um, next up is Animal Behaviour which is sponsored by the fantastic Gary Hodges, who is not only one of our judges, but is one of this year's guest artists. So please do take a look online at some of his incredible work. Gary is a much loved and hugely collectible wildlife artist. So we are so delighted to have your support of this category. The animal behavior category celebrates artwork that exhibits a true understanding of animal behavior, capturing moments which might be humorous, tragic, aggressive, or simply part of their daily ritual. It's one of our most popular categories every year, and I think you'll agree that there is something in this one for everyone, so please do take a look. Straight over to Laura to announce the winner of Animal Behaviour. Thanks, Georgina. So we are delighted to announce the winner of the Animal Behaviour category is The Cardboard Gorilla by Olivier Bertrand. And we'd love to share with you some comments from judges Simon Trapnell and Emily Lamb. Simon Trapnell says, this special piece fascinates me in many ways. It puts me in my place. Olivier has represented this powerful and majestic subject using a fragile, almost casual material, which gives this sculpture a unique character and voice. For within it, there also is a gentleness and resonance that not only reflects the true nature and behaviour of the gorilla, but also points a finger to the viewer to consider his behaviour and attitude towards endangered species such as these. And Emily Lamb added, this magnificent feat of artwork demonstrates to me what expression in art is all about, mighty and delicate, heavy and light in movement, the sheer gorilla scale a sight to be reckoned with, the craftsmanship and commitment to create something with the materials we have so easily readily around us is both genius and pure. I wish I could have seen this in the flesh. I agree. I think we did also see um, Olivia pop up earlier on the chat, so we are delighted and I'm hoping that you are with us online and have just heard that you have won that fantastic category. Moving straight on to Earth's Wild Beauty. This is generously sponsored by Moore Barlow, who have been incredible this evening and sponsored many other categories, which we'll touch on later. Our planet is an inspiring tapestry of contrasting habitats and landscapes 
providing home to a host of different animals, plants, trees and insects. The Earth's Wild Beauty category is a celebration of Earth's wild landscapes, seascapes and all that live in them. From lush, leafy rainforests to harsh deserts, the highest snowy mountain tops and the isolated frozen tundra. Every inch of the world is inhabited by life and wild beauty in some form if we just stop and take the time to look. For me, this category is a real celebration of the often raw and unseen elements of our world and all of those who call it home. So I'm delighted to hand over to Laura to announce the winner of Earth's Wild Beauty and share with you some judges' comments. Thanks, Georgina. So we are thrilled to announce the winner of this category, Earth's Wild Beauty, is Etosha by Paul Dixon. And we have some really wonderful comments to share with you from Melanie Shepherd and Emily Lamb. Melanie says, it's rare to find a painting that truly captures the essence of a subject with such atmospheric precision. Having been lucky enough to travel to Etosha and see cheetahs in the wild, it's extraordinary how brilliantly Paul paints this mesmerising scene. You can almost feel the emptiness and see the mirage that are created in the blistering hot and staggeringly beautiful desert landscape. And Emily adds, a piece that exudes the blanket heat and mystery of Etosha, immediately transported to the baking plains of Namibia and where these animals seemingly survive off hot air alone. The gentleness captured with subtle, subtle tones and colours masterfully set to canvas the image of Namibia and her cheetahs, a painting I would love to own and escape from time to time. And I should mention as well, our first winner, Scarlett, is online and says, hi, everyone. Delighted to have won my category. Thank you very much. Glad to do it for such a good cause. Scarlett, it's wonderful to have you with us tonight. Next up is Facing Extinction, which is sponsored by our very dear friends of David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation and animals all over the world. It's Martin and Emma Lou, who I do hope are online and are listening with us along this evening. Today, tragically, we are living in the sixth mass extinction with over a million species now at threat from extinction and many within mere decades. This is all down to man's exploitation of the natural world. And we face witnessing the disappearance of some of the Earth's most iconic and lesser known species if we do not act now. It's why the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation exists. Whether driven by habitat destruction, wildlife crime, human wildlife conflict, pollution, climate change or disease, the growing challenges facing many of these incredible creatures could mean that our last chance to see them will only be on canvases or immortalised in sculpture. The poignancy of this category should remind all of us tonight that while we are here to celebrate, we also have an important job and role to play in restoring the ailing health of our planet. Over to Laura to share with you the winner of this category. Thanks so much, Georgina. So we are delighted to announce the winner of the Facing Extinction category is Paradis Perdu by Jean-Francois Gambino. And here are some of the judges' comments. Nina Nina said this piece was chosen as the winner of the Facing Extinction category for not only the incredibly clear message it's representing, but also for the beautiful execution of the sculpture. The very clever choice of materials used, bronze for the strength and power of the beautiful animal alongside glass for transparency and fragility. The roughness of the sculpture also works well against the smooth glass underneath. This artwork is both a very well executed piece of sculpture, it also represents the plight of animals facing extinction. And Gary Hodges added, by mixing sleek turquoise glass with a rough rocky texture to create a lifelike polar bear, Jean-Francois Gambino has created an amazing sculpture full of visual impact. And just again, thank you so much. We've got people now tuning in from South Africa, from Germany, all over the UK and much further afield. So thank you very much. Next category is Into the Blue, which is generously sponsored by Paul Traub Associates. Covering 75% of our planet and essential to all life on Earth, fresh and seawater are home to some of the most unusual, diverse, mysterious and incredible creatures. Due to pollution, however, particularly plastics, our oceans are struggling to support life. It is more important now than ever before that as humans, we work to care for and appreciate the water on our planet, 
preventing more pollution and cleaning up the mess which has been made for decades before the richness of life underwater is lost. The Into the Blue category celebrates artwork which illustrates the wonderful world of water, be it ocean, seashore, wetland, river or stream, and the incredible animals and landscapes within it. Delighted to hand back to Laura to announce the winner of Into the Blue. So on to this wonderful category. The winner of the Into the Blue category is Silver Lining by Tom Middleton. We'll share with you some words and comments from the judges. Gary Hodges said, with expertise and sensitivity, Tom Middleton has created a beautifully flowing piece of art that is both calming and lively. He has chosen to portray a much maligned creature and I believe makes us want to know more about hammerhead sharks and their world. And Mandy Shepherd also said, a wonderfully executed image of an unusual view of this majestic creature. The artist portrays a natural affinity with his subject and there is great movement in the piece that causes our eye. Black and white is always so effective and his use of graphite is sublime. A very worthy winner of this category. Moving on now to urban wildlife. This is one of our newer categories and is generously sponsored again by Moore Barlow. The beauty of the natural world isn't always found in the most obvious of places and life in an urban environment is often overlooked when it comes to seeking out or noticing wildlife. Many species live side by side with city dwelling humans without ever really being noticed. Within a harsh city landscape, a fascinating world of wildlife can be uncovered if we only stop and open our eyes. The urban wildlife category celebrates art which depicts an urban setting or the city life of animals and plants whilst demonstrating a contrast and harmony between the wild and the urban. Over to Laura to announce the winner of Urban Wildlife. Thanks Georgina. We are delighted to announce the winner of the urban wildlife category goes to Plastic Camouflage by Javier de la Rosa. And here are some comments from Emily Lamb and Hazel Sohn. Emily said, I really loved this piece. I felt the strain, the imprisonment and deathly trappings of the plastic the second I saw it. I wanted to break this creature and all creatures free of its man-made constraints. This piece is all and everything that art needs to change forth with in such questioning and challenging times. To be struck with the importance of recognising nature's struggle and yet make it beautiful to look at and hold the space for questions is, to me, the epitome of art and what we should be celebrating, a brilliant piece of artwork. And Hazel added, it is surprisingly difficult to preach an ethical message through a wildlife artwork without risking diminution of artistic value. In this bronze wall sculpture, Javier de la Rosa blatantly conveys his message with a poignant two-edged image. By entangling a snake in plastic netting, one threat is exchanged for another. With its writhing frozen in bronze, the death throw is captured in a three-dimensional hieroglyphic, symbolizing very succinctly the deadly menace presented by plastic pollution. Next up is Wings, which is sponsored by our wonderful friends at Silver Surfers. The wonderful world of winged creatures is diverse, complex and fascinating. Birds, bees, butterflies and bats all experience the planet from a different perspective, soaring above the oceans, crossing vast desert plains and making their homes in unusual locations. Many winged species travel thousands of miles across the continent each year during their migration. However, these journeys are becoming more and more perilous due to human behaviour and development with many routes now posing huge threats to migrating birds. The wings category shows the extraordinary variety of winged wildlife on our planet, including birds and insects in flight or at rest. Over to Laura to announce the winner of wings. Thanks, Georgina. We are delighted to announce the winner of the wings category goes to modelling by ZZ Lai. And here are the, some of the comments from two of our judges. Hazel Sohn says one of watercolour's greatest attributes is it, its ability to exploit the maxim, less is more. ZZ Lai's painting is a delightful expression of this adage. With few colours and a minimum of brush strokes, she repeats with enough variety to hold our interest. The simple shape of a bird across the central axis of a glorious sheet of white paper. With her title, Modelling, she 
neatly alludes to both the poses of the birds on the wire and the adroit use of minimal but essential modelling within the bird forms, a pleasing endorsement of less is more. And Melanie Shepherd said, Zizi Lai's model is a beautifully sensitive painting of birds capturing the simplicity of their movement in her carefully crafted understated use of watercolour. Another enchanting masterpiece by this brilliant young artist from Hong Kong. Just want to give a specific shout out to Karen who is online who is watching with her nine-year-old daughter and 12-year-old son in Surrey and says how important an age it is to start learning about this so thank you Karen and to everybody else who is joining us this evening and so delighted that we have Tom Middleton one of the past winners also online who's been able to hear that he was the successful winner. Next up is the Watercolour Prize, which is a new award for 2020. The Elizabeth Hosking Prize for Watercolour is a wonderful addition to our award prizes this year. The winner of this award has been chosen personally by Elizabeth herself and by Hazel Sohn. Part of the prize for the watercolour category, beyond which that the winner receives, includes a donation to the work of the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation, which makes it even more special in regard to our ability to save species and have a lasting impact on conservation across Africa and Asia. So I'm delighted to hand over to Laura to announce the winner of the Elizabeth Hosking Prize for Watercolour. Thanks Georgina. We are delighted to announce this winner of the Water Prize category, Watercolour sorry, Prize category is Tansy Beetle by Nicola Hope. We have some joint comments from the judges here, which is from Elizabeth Hoskin and Hazel Sohn. They said, we chose Tansy Beetle for its boldness and colour and strong and vibrant use of the watercolour medium. It is an exciting rendition of an endangered species which apparently lives only in a 20 mile stretch of the banks of the River Ouse around York. Very precious indeed. So the final award of the evening before we move on to the runner up and winner of Wildlife Artist of the Year 2020 is the Artist Magazine Personal Choice Award. This is sponsored by the Artist Magazine and chosen by editor and publisher Dr Sally Bolden. The winner of this award receives an interview feature in the upcoming edition of the Artist Magazine, which is just wonderful. So over to Laura to announce the winner. OK, so the winner of the Artist Magazine Personal Choice category is A Confusion of Guinea Fowl by Colette Clegg. Dr Sally Bolgin said, I love this artist's aim to create something extraordinary from the ordinary. Her use of resonant bright colour, her bold handling of paint and the freedom of interpretation encapsulated in this vibrant composition. Now at this point during the awards, we are about to head into our final two categories, the overall runner up and the overall winner. But before we do that, if you'll let me, I'd love to perform another song for you to break up the awards and for something different. I'd also like to encourage you now to have a look at the brand new website that was launched earlier this week and you can head to davidshepherd.org to see for yourselves. So I hope you enjoy this next piece of music. It's called Golden Slumbers. To get back home would. Once there was a way To get back home Sleep pretty darling Do not cry And I will sing a lullaby Once there was a way to 
to get back home world. Once there was a way to get back home Sleep pretty darling, do not cry And I will sing a lullaby if I became a frozen face there to everyone. <laughs> Over to you Georgina. Thanks so much Laura. We've had some fantastic comments saying yes please Laura so perfect. Um, one from Jason saying we could have done a lovely duet. Martin saying can you come back every year Laura and sing for us. I have to say it's a good thing I was on mute because I was singing away and I would have absolutely ruined it if I, <laughs> if I hadn't have been. Um, and of course now we move into the overall runner-up. This is generously sponsored by More Barlow, and I know that we have Ray Black from More Barlow Online, which is wonderful as such a long term supporter of our work. Thank you for your support in sponsoring the overall runner up and many other awards this evening. We are hugely grateful. I'm going to jump straight to Laura's. I'm sure you're all on tenterhooks as to who will be announced as the overall runner up of this year's competition. Thanks Georgina. We are so delighted to announce that the overall runner-up for Wildlife Artist of the Year is Bison by Umberto and I actually think Umberto is with us this evening as well so congratulations to you. We're now going to see a film of the judges comments as to why Umberto was such a worthy winner. On behalf of all the judges and as a unanimous vote for the runner-up of Wildlife Artist of the Year Umberto Nuzo's bison was a clear favourite. This magnificent work of art is a true reflection of the sheer power that the bison is so famous for. The heaving force of it, so accurately yet masterfully depicted in its weight, grace and power. Each and every one of us was drawn to Umberto's bison, intoxicated by its elegance and of course its beautifully compelling dark, dark patina. Truly a world-class sculpture. I wish we could all see this in the flesh, and marvel at its details. Thank you for the courage and commitment I know is necessary to produce a piece like this. The judges really love this sculpture. You know, fossil records show that bison have been around since prehistoric times. And also, despite their enormous weight and size, they're remarkably agile and fast and athletic. And Berto somehow has managed to capture that whole story in this single sculpture made of material and with a patina that emphasizes its bulk and its size. Yet with subtle and deliberate exaggerations, he's also brought out the life and the personality of this animal. 
it is instantly recognizable. And so whether you give it a cursory glance or you ponder it for a while, it certainly has something to say. Wonderful. We will jump now straight to the announcement of the overall winner. This incredible prize of £10,000 is sponsored by very dear friends and long-term supporters, Neil and June Covey. This competition wouldn't exist without your generosity and we are all beyond grateful for everything that you do for wildlife. Thank you. We are also thrilled to announce a new Wildlife Art of the Year partnership with the art orientated Ungava Lodge and Game Reserve in Namibia, who have made it possible for the winner to also win a safari, excluding international travel, and two week artist in residency to the Ungava Lodge and Game Reserve in Namibia. During the trip, the winning artists will have the opportunity to also see the conservation work that DSWF is funding to protect the last stronghold population of desert adapted black rhino. It was an almost impossible decision to have chosen from the incredible artwork this year. And whilst everybody is a deserved and worthy winner, it is my absolute pleasure to hand over to Laura to officially announce this year's Wildlife Artist of the Year winner. Thanks, Georgina. And so for the overall winner of the Wildlife Artist of the Year 2020 is awarded to Woodstalk by Andrew Pledge. Huge, huge congratulations to Andrew. And we're now going to listen to some judging comments on film from Mandy Shepherd and Hazel Sohn. The judges are delighted to pronounce Andrew Pledge's Woodstock as the winner of this year's exhibition. Often the best artworks appear deceptively simple and arguably the Woodstock is not the most attractive bird on earth. But this painting exudes an uncanny and breathtaking beauty. Somehow Andrew has, through his masterful technique, garnered that something other that makes a winner. Very difficult to explain, but very clear to see. A very worthy winner. It's a wonderful privilege to be part of the judging panel in a way. It's a very exciting competition to be involved in. And every year we see wonderful works come through of great imagination and creativity. Um, and the quality gets better every year. And we find it uh, significantly more difficult to choose the prize winners, let alone the, a overall winner. And this year, 2020, Andrew Pledge has won it with his portrayal of our Woodstalk. The Woodstalk is not perhaps an obvious choice, but the way he's done it and used the oil paint um, with such effect, um, just nailed it as far as I was concerned. I'm a great bird lover and it was always going to be a favourite of mine. He's got the great dark contrast to the big body of the white bird itself and the detail when you get up right close to the painting is just masterful, it's an exquisite. I think the magic of the whole painting is the intense brilliance with which he's used this gold leaf uh, to such full effect and uh, it commands um, um, great authority, it's a fantastic painting, it really is, and a very worthy winner. Um, and Andrew, you certainly add to the integrity of this competition big time. So well done and congratulations. A huge congratulations again to Andrew Pledge, the overall winner of Wildlife Artists of the Year. And of course, huge congratulations to all of our worthy winners. An enormous thank you to all of the artists who entered. It really does make such a huge difference to wildlife conservation around the world. And we are truly grateful. Of course, thank you to our sponsors and judges too, and to everyone who's joined us and supported our work through the exhibition. Please don't forget to visit the exhibition to vote for your People's Choice Award by clicking on your favourite artwork. Everyone who votes gets entered into a prize draw for the chance to win a great prize of silver elephant cufflinks that have been kindly donated by Patrick Mavros and a silk scarf kindly donated by Mia Cora.
The winning artist will also receive a £500 voucher from art suppliers Great Art. And I'm actually delighted to say that to date we've already received over 5,000 votes. So please make sure your favourite artist is up there with a chance of winning. I'm now going to hand back over to Georgina for some final remarks and congratulations again to all of our winners. Over to you, Georgina. Thanks, Laura. And I've just seen that Umberto has responded saying, I'm speechless. Thank you so much. So, so delighted to Umberto and to Andrew as two very worthy winners. Finally, from me, wildlife art needs us, sorry, wildlife needs us more now than ever before. So please support us in any way you can by buying art or donating if you're able. And together we can protect the wildlife that inspires all of the work that you've seen tonight. I have a few quick additional thank yous, which I must share. Firstly to Laura, my co-host and fantastic singer, thank you. We couldn't have done it without you. To our judges and sponsors and the entire DSWF team, and of course to our artists. You are some of the best, bravest and most incredible advocates for the natural world. And none of this would exist without you. So please keep creating and celebrating what we're all fighting to protect. To our tech team tonight at Simity, especially Andrew Chambers, Dan Richardson, my wonderful friend, and Richard Lewis, who have all allowed us to do this incredible online event, all with their time and services for free. To my incredible friends, Theo Bromfield and Matt Armstrong Ford, who helped with the video content, and everyone who has worked so hard behind the scenes in these challenging times to make sure that Way 2020 carried on, despite the world shutting down around us. And finally, to end, Way really was the highlight for my grandfather, being so close to his heart and the reason why he started the foundation all those decades ago. It's a legacy we are incredibly proud to carry on in his name and on behalf of the wildlife we fight to protect. Thank you from everyone at the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation and good night. <laughs>